Hello and welcome to another episode of Unstuck with Hypnopunk Transformation with Edge. I am the Hypnopunk and today is a very special show because we don't often have guests here but today we do have a guest here and my guest is uh, Miss Jennifer Lawrence. How are you Jennifer Lawrence? I'm awesome, thanks. How are you? I'm very, very good. Not to be confused with the starlet Jennifer Lawrence of Hollywood fame. Jennifer Lawrence, the original. The original Jennifer Lawrence, absolutely. And um, so we have, we, have, we have Jen here today. And um, basically, I thought it would be an interesting interview today because Jen is just really beginning her journey in hypnosis, in learning hypnosis, in teaching hypnosis, in working with clients. And um, sometimes I, I've been doing this close to 20 years now and, and often forget what it's like to be a beginner and learn this stuff because I've been doing it so long so I thought it would be refreshing for you guys to hear uh, if you're thinking about getting involved in hypnosis or any kind of change work what, what the beginning steps are for somebody kind of what it what it looks like um, you know the positive some of the challenges um, that a newbie might encounter of course all this will be with this unique my unique style of edge in everything that we do so if there's some colorful language um, some unpolitically correct um, statements I bring up that's the flavor of the show that's what I do and if you don't like it switch off <laughs> you're still there great fantastic this is why we're different from everything else out there so Jen I guess how I like to begin these things is we, we don't often do like I say um, um, interviews with people so you are really one of our first uh, if not our first interview here so let's start off with the uh, the origin stories because always superheroes always start off with a with an origin story and how they got their superpower and and what happened and so forth like that so um, let, let's find out a little bit more about you and your origin story how did you get involved in hypnosis um, so I had a friend who um, was doing hypnosis and he he introduced me, he did a couple techniques on me and I was impressed with how I was struggling with something and it's super ridiculous what I was struggling with, it was textures with fabric and um, it had been plaguing me my whole life, it affected every day, getting dressed was uncomfortable and going out was awkward and um, it, it was a real mental turmoil for me and seeing the transformation after I did some hypnosis was really incredible. Um, for me, I was a labor doula in the past, which is when you give support to women when they're having their baby. And I would do a lot of techniques like guided imagery and pain control and um, distraction uh, with touch, getting them to focus on other things. And essentially, when I experienced hypnosis, I realized that a lot of the things that I had been doing already, using words of suggestion to encourage people and to give them that positive frame of mind. These were all techniques that I had already been doing. And so um, when I was introduced to hypnosis, I thought it was fascinating for myself personally, but then I've always had um, a desire to have a job or a career or a path in life rather, I would rather call it, where I make change, where I have a positive effect on people's lives where I motivate, where I empower people to do things and face things that they never thought they could, like having a birth, unmedicated birth. Um, I was also a personal fitness trainer and did group fitness, so it was all, all of those things were very motivating and, and empowering. And when I came across hypnosis, it just seemed like once I got over the wow factor for myself, it seemed like the logical next step. For me to learn something to get involved in in a more powerful way of more expansive way um, to influence other people and to have a positive impact in the world like a superhero very very good and if you were a superhero what would be your name <laughs> i would be wonder woman of course but that's already taken though not tough <laughs> I think there's a copyright with uh, uh, DC comment, okay. comics there, so uh, I think you're pretty much screwed. Um, uh, damn it. I'm caught off guard. I don't know. I'll have to think of a new one. J-Law. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That works. Very good. Um, okay, so you're inspired by somebody that you met. You had a background in, in some kind of healing arts with your, what do you call it, doula? Yeah, a Okay. Doula. okay. Uh, sorry, I also was learning Reiki as well, mm, which... Yeah. Um, when I got into learning a couple of the practices, I realized how closely linked they are as well. It's just all energy mm. and mentality. 
Okay. Well, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. What, what for you, um, is the difference between Reiki and hypnosis as you experience it? Um, Reiki, I would say, is more energy-based and feeling-based, whereas hypnosis, you're you're getting them to give you a lot of the energy, whereas I feel like with Reiki, you're, you're doing the investigating hmm. without any real um, feedback from them until it's all done. Okay. Yeah. And when, when you would do Reiki, how would you, how would you perform Reiki on somebody? I kind of had my own style. Um, uh, any Reiki listeners don't listen at this point, <laughs> or Reiki practitioners. Um, wouldn't, you wouldn't need to say it. They would just feel it, right? Yeah. They would just felt it before you said that, and they would have just switched off. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it reminds me of a joke about Reiki, where it is, uh, you know, if I was a Reiki practitioner, they're going to hate me for saying this now, but what I would do um, is I'd put them face down on, like, a massage bed, um, and I'd put some relaxing music, and I'd tell them not to open their eyes for the next 50 minutes, right. um, why I, you know, uh, touched above them, should we say, yes. and then went and read the newspaper or watched the game or... <laughs> caught up on Netflix or something and then came back and uh, cashed a uh, easy paycheck. <laughs> I know they hate me. But, um, but, but no, no, tell me, how, how is Reiki different from that? For, um, Reiki is essentially your feeling for heat or okay. um, energy imbalances over top of the body. Some people do it with touch. But my own personal flavor is I like to put one hand on the heart and one hand on the head. And mm. It's kind of connecting the head and the heart. Okay. And then I do my most pr powerful healing in that phase. Okay. Would you like to share what you did so, so, when you did how you would heal? You don't have to if you don't want to. Oh, that's giving away my... Okay. Fair power. enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hypnotists are very, uh, very territorial over the techniques that they claim to have developed. You um, know, I will, I'll say this. It's when I do my truest healing, I have to completely turn off my conscious brain. Mm. So I have to tune in completely to my feeling. And when I do my healing, I give that person intent and um, really try to communicate through my energy on their head and heart what I'm feeling they need. Okay. And that's that's a, that's a felt sense. That's something you feel. Completely. Felt. Okay. Yeah. If I think about it, I ruin it. Ah, okay. Yeah. Much like a um, and a professional athlete or performer mm -hmm. who will practice, practice, practice something until it's the big game, the big recital, the big performance. Where if they're in their head in that moment, um, they can mess up, uh, fuck up their own performance yeah. because they're too much in their head and not in their body. Mm -hmm. Is it something like that? Yeah, pretty much. The conscious mind gets in the way. Yeah. So I just have to completely tune into feeling, and this sounds really. T crunchy granola but <laughs> that's some of me uh, just feeling that other person just getting into their space energetically and sorting it out okay mm -hmm. um, so let's sidebar that yep. for a moment a bit, a bit interesting um, so what was the first wow factor for you in hypnosis what was the first thing that you experienced where you're like oh shit there's something to this I think immediately um because the texture thing was a big thing, but it, it was over time that I realized the change in my behavior. Um, I had a migraine, a debilitating migraine. Um, I had been up all night, and um, I couldn't sleep. I had taken medication. It wasn't helping. I, just, I was sitting with a bowl clutched on my lap and just felt like my head was going to explode. Mm. And then um, I had hypnosis to work on that, and... It, it took a little while, like it wasn't a one minute deal, but it wasn't more than an hour. Okay. Um, and then to go from being completely debilitated to going to the gym and having the best workout, mm. two hour long, amazing, heavy lifting weights, which if I have any sort of headache and I lift weights, then it exacerbates it. Okay. So that was just like, holy shit, uh, that didn't, nothing else was working, and hypnosis mm. cured me, if you will. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you, 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 you entered into it. Uh, the door, the foot was placed in the door, so to speak, with, with someone that you knew that was practicing a little bit. Yep. What was the next thing 
um, on your journey to get you to where you are today to, to practice in? Um, I think that person suggested, because I was in the midst of a career <laughs> crisis, I, I was going back to school for something and, and just kind of randomly picking up that stuff, but knowing I needed a greater good, knowing I couldn't just sit behind a desk, and no offense to those of you that are listening that do that, but it's just not for me. I need to feel and see the impact that I have in people's lives. Okay. Um, and so this person suggested, haha, you could do this. And you could supplement some income, start small and build. And I went, oh, ha. Huh. And then the more I thought about it, the more it just seemed like the perfect next logical step for me. It just, it seemed like it was meant to be. And it was thrilling at that point when I had that, oh, my God, this is, this is my next step in my path. Okay. Very good. And if you are sitting out there listening to this uh, and you do have a nine to five job and you are selling your soul right there, you know who I'm speaking to and you may resent it a little bit, but you know deep down that you have a great or good out there to do. The amount of people that I know that in our city uh, work for the government and it pays them a nice paycheck and it, and it helps them to pay their mortgage. Uh, and good, good, good benefits and all that good stuff. But the amount of people that I know that feel mm -hmm. like they have sold their soul and that creative, artistic healing, whatever it is, that dream that they had, uh, that they just said, I'm going to go work for the government for a little bit and then I'm going to come back to this dream. I'm going to come back to my true purpose. And, and the amount of people that don't do that uh, is, is alarming. So I think for you and for the people who don't get sucked up or seduced by that, and there's nothing wrong with those people who, who choose to do that for a while. It's, it's nothing wrong with the people who are busboys or waiters or waitress. When I, my first job was a busboy, but as a 30-year-old man, if I was still a busboy after when I started at 16 or 17, maybe something went wrong along the way for me uh, that I didn't quite um, have the courage to pursue something that I loved. So if you are out there, and you do have one of those jobs and it is paying the bills and you are sucked into that that comfort where you feel comfortable but you you don't feel like you have that kind of juice or the life that you want quit as jack black would say from tenacious d quit your day job and earnestly work on your craft for a couple of years and after a couple of years I'll, I'll float in i'll fly in and if you're doing good if you're really really good at your craft i will encourage you but if you suck, I'm going to come by and I'm going to say stop. And you really should stop. <laughs> Sorry, it's one of my favorite bits from Jack Black. But I, I feel that so many people do have, do have unlimited potential in them. And it reminds me of the quote of, um, I'm going to massacre it right now, but going to the graveyard um, and the cemetery and being upset, not because there's so many dead bodies there, but because there's so much missed opportunity and missed potential, the, the risks, the opportunities people mm -hmm. didn't take. And that, that's what drives me crazy and, and, and makes, makes me upset. So if you get anything from this, you can be angry with me. You can be angry with this podcast. Great, but go and fucking do something about it and take your life to the next level. Stop blaming people. Stop complaining about things and about how hard your life is and get off your ass and do something about it. So, and anyway, so Jen, your next logical <laughs> step after you determine you want to go into hypnosis, what was one of the first courses that you did, first books that you read or something along along that line? Um, so I started watching a lot of um, YouTube videos mm. um, and just kind of seeing what I liked, what I didn't. Um, and then uh, I went, this friend was doing some training and he, or was interested in training and offered um, that we should go together. And so we went and um, I did the kinetic shift with Carl Smith. Mm. And it was amazing. It mm -hmm. was, uh, he's an amazing instructor. I felt um, as a new, like my very first training, mm -hmm. I felt really well equipped to start some stuff and um uh his technique was really awesome and, and reminded me a lot of the qualities of reiki mm. um and so that was really good it was overwhelming and mm -hmm. and um a little intimidating but he mm -hmm. he did a really good job and having my um support with me was amazing Okay. Um, takeaways from that course without giving specific details away of, of what he specifically teaches? 
Um, to practice, really. And that was one of the gifts I would say he gave us, um, without giving away his technique, to practice it and um, work on it. And with those things, I was able to take that and then start doing some street hypnosis mm. uh, and doing some hypnosis with my friends. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that was really exciting to, to just weeks after learning, get out on the street and um, ready, shoot, aim, mm. as they say. That's a once wise <laughs> man said. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Very good. Mm -hmm. um, and what's the next step for you? Um, I'm doing another training coming up. Mm -hmm. um, I went to a, a convention um, last month mm. and that was interesting but I felt um, I made a lot of cool connections met a lot of neat people mm -hmm. um, but I felt it was helpful in the sense that I realized I need more kind of workshop trainings like the initial one I had because okay. having an hour or two of, of a talk or whatnot wasn't enough for me because I didn't have enough of foundation to to really kind of find the place for those windows and doors okay um, in my practice. So um, I'm also, I have a name for my company. Mm. I'm starting to make connections, looking for places where I can practice out of. Um, I have someone working on the design for my logo. Okay. Um, connecting with a lawyer to register my company. Okay. And um, yeah, just continuing to practice, right? Not letting the fear of failure overwhelm mm. me, which I'm sure as many listeners can relate, it, it can feel oppressive but you just have to push through that and trust yourself mm. some influences um to you uh, in hypnosis uh you of course um thank you <laughs> you're welcome I, I, pay, I paid you well yeah indeed um honestly though you've been an amazing inspiration um watching your videos reading your stuff that you post online um being a part of your Facebook groups, um, hearing and, and reading the change that you've had in people's lives and knowing how much that aligns with me personally and my personal goals and my personal philosophy. Um, it's, it's inspiring to watch your work and, and hear about what you're capable of doing and striving to be, um, a change worker like you. Mm, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Um, and to the people who are starting to get involved in any form of change work, whether that be hypnosis, Reiki, NLP, anything of that ilk, what, what, what would you, what would be your free recommendations, uh, free tips that you can give people that are just starting that want to enter in, in, in the change work field, if you will? Um, what free tips as, as a beginner would, would you offer these people? to keep them inspired, to keep them on track, to do, to take action, what would what, they be? I think um, for me, my, my biggest help has been to find a mentor, um, to find someone to support you, to find someone that you can ask those questions that you're too embarrassed to maybe post online or mm. um, to see, ask them questions about their personal journey. So having a mentor, someone that you look up to, um, People are usually quite flattered when you ask them for help because that means that they're doing an amazing job and, and serve as an inspiration. Um, don't get stuck in the fear zone would be my second one. Um, write things down. If you have all these things and ideas in your head, write them down and um, put them somewhere concrete. For me, I need to see them to organize them. Um, so having these scatterbrained, you know, uncollected and disorganized thoughts in my head isn't helpful. So once I put them down on paper and brainstorm and um, that's really helpful for me. And then three, my main philosophy in life is, is don't let fear overwhelm you. Trust yourself when you are afraid. That's all the more reason to do it. Um, and I spent a summer just facing a lot of my fears and working on that. So um, find a mentor write things down, organize your ideas, and um, face the fear and just do it. Awesome. Thank you, Jen. Um, do you have any links, email addresses, Twitter, YouTube, because any way that people could contact you if they were interested in getting hypnosis in Ottawa, um, Canada, the nation's capital? <laughs> That's right. Um, 
Yes. So um, if they contact me on Facebook for now, um, my site isn't quite ready. Okay. Um, Jennifer Lawrence Tackaberry. Um, and then stay tuned for Grounded Hypnosis because maybe by the time you're listening to this, it will be up and running. So Grounded Hypnosis. Okay. And in the show notes, we will put the links to your Facebook and any other information you want to give us. Awesome. Very good. Thank you very much, Jen, for joining us today. This has been Unstuck with Hypnopunk Transformation with Edge. And um, I'll see you when I'm looking at you. Always believe. <laughs>